you know some of the uh, legislation that's coming along to try to control AI that we've been fighting, like SB 1047, they actually have certain statutes in there. They've watered it down a little bit, but ultimately what they want to do is uh, hold the model builders, you know, in sort of uh, personal liability mm -hmm. or even criminal liability for the things that their models might have a hand in doing, which is sort of like throwing the car designer uh, in jail because someone got drunk and yeah. you know, drove the car and hit someone. Tell me briefly who you are, what company you're part of, and you can explain your role at the company and any logistics. Hi, I'm Anjane Mida. My name is Chris. Hi, I'm Tishan Yam. My name is Travis Oliphant. My name is Miles Wiesenthal. I'm Girish Bird. I'm a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz. We are a venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. We have about $35 billion in committed capital, and we've been investing in artificial intelligence for many years. I'm the founder of a startup called Context Fund. And we are an open source community of researchers and engineers who are working towards building open source AI. Co-founder and CEO of Lutra AI. We're an AI startup looking into how we can use AI to give people superpowers to automate more of their work and lives by giving like natural language instructions to a computer and allowing it to just do more. I've uh, been a participant in open source communities for many years, having created projects like NumPy and SciPy and the company Anaconda. Presently, I'm with a head of product for a company based in Palo Alto called Zyphra. I'm the founding engineer at AI startup called CoFactory. We're super small, about four or five employees. I basically do full stack development for the whole platform. I lead marketing at an AI data startup. Uh, we are an early stage startup. Uh, what we do is we use Gen AI and we also have our own AI model. What specific aspects of the book concern your company the most and how do you see those affecting daily operations within the company? A lot of me feels like this is like, that like my biggest worry is that this is really premature, right? And because it's, we're so early in the stage of understanding what these models can do. A year ago, we heard a lot of uh, fear scenarios, like, oh my God, this thing is so amazing, so take over all these jobs and everything. A year later today, I'm like, GPT-4 is doing all the silly things. Can it just do the right thing? And then we are all starting to layer on all these controls now on who can use it. And that I think is going to really stifle progress. We really think that the future is one where there are multiple providers, there are multiple options, and that competition, that competition is really healthy and that leads to innovation. In our company, the concerns, I know that the bill tries to exclude startups with its restrictions on kind of value of the model. Uh, it, it actually doesn't have it has an inconsistent uh, applicability of they try to put a dollar amount around the training model but then they, they have hours they try to compete they have hours and dollar amounts but they don't use a consistent pattern for derivative models really concerned about is how the uh, the terminology or definitions of covered model and frontier models are, uh, are used within the proposed bill because i think at one side, when I look at it, I could say that, oh, yes, it, 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 it's only trying to address uh, uh, the caters to the larger vendors who can afford that. But I think oh, with innovation and evolution, so to speak, uh, what's a, la a covered model will may become uh, an uh, 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 entry level model in few years from now. So that's that's that part of the problem that I have uh, regarding the bill where it, it what is a frontier model today could be an uh, entry-level model a few years from now with the rapid innovation that's happening, happening elsewhere. There's a whole host of problems with 1047. It's not just one. I, I think one of the biggest things that we've been critical of, we were one of the first open source organizations to track the bill and help get the ball rolling in terms of open source and startup opposition. One of the big challenges that we see is that, and we hear especially from other companies that I've invested in, and is that it affects this kind of FMD, which is an unelected political body that will determine indirectly whether a model is okay to release or not by means of the board setting the employees, which then set the jury instructions, which then go on to influence these statements that developers are signing under penalty of perjury. SB 1047 creates new civil and criminal liabilities 
for AI developers. And the requirement to certify potential harms under penalty of perjury could expose startup founders and employees to personal legal risks, which is a way higher liability risk than is, is typical on technology developers. The bill could disproportionately affect startups who rely on open source AI models, which are basically the only way for startups who haven't raised hundreds of millions of dollars to access leading AI models to build on top of. And so by what SP7 does is contemplate and propose criminal liabilities on open source model developers for making their models. And, that, and that's going to hurt ultimately the, the little startups the, the most. How do you think SB 1047 conflicts with California's reputation as being this giant hub for innovation and, and specifically in Silicon Valley? I think the thing you have to look at is what are the organizations that can't easily meet? So Stanford, Berkeley, these have some networks here that are very fixed in location. They're going to be, it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's going to be really hard for them because they're not going to be able to access the cutting edge models from other places in the world. And I think over time that can contribute to California becoming less of a hub for these things because you now have this kind of strong reason to not be in California. That also affects very meaningfully how fast science progresses over the next 10 to 20 years. So you could easily see not only in California, but also in other places around the world as we have to reshuffle who is where, like a, maybe two X to 10 X slowdown in terms of some of these basic sciences. I think it really, California shoots itself in the foot by passing this law. Now at best case, they pass it and don't really implement it very well, right? And then it just becomes this kind of on the books law that's just there to bite somebody if somebody wants to use it as a weapon against another group, right? You make somebody mad in the, in the government and they come after you with this law. It, it, it just, at the best case, just becomes this latent um, missile or you know, arm that you can take to somebody to chase them out of the state if you want them gone, for example, right? And um, that may happen, it just doesn't implement it. Maybe it passes, they don't really implement it very well. And so then people just don't worry about it. But, that's not good. Like, it's not good to have, I don't think that's a good state of legal jurisprudence to have laws that are just not implemented and are ready to catch somebody unawares if they don't, if they don't if not realize that's what they're in the middle of. Or worse, you have trolls later that show up and start to bring lawsuits against companies on the basis of this law yeah. to claim that they were harmed by the model. So suddenly I can't use those models anymore in California. And that's so important to us. That That's the reason we would move because we need to be have access to those models. So I, I, I think it's consolidation of power versus an ecosystem that's flourishing with different startups. If you look at the Bay Area or YC and all of these things that are happening in here, startups are this interesting beast where it's like thousands of companies get created all the time in this tech ecosystem. Not everyone succeeds, but some do, some blossom and bloom and grow. And I think what is needed for that is the environment, right? The soil, the fertilizer, the seeds we plant into that, right? And that comes from the communities, the investors, the you know networks that we have in here, the engineers and the ecosystems, the support networks we have in here. Now, a big part of that moving forward is going to be AI. What AI models we have access to, what intelligence uh, in the machines that we can get access, access to. And now, if we, as we 1047, what it does is that it takes away one of those pieces, right? It takes away that fertilizer, so to speak, that helps these startups blossom and grow, and they're going to be limited, right? And that, that that onerous level might just really hinder like that blossoming of startups, and that's going to hinder the number of successes we get. And I think all of us want to see more, more Apples, more Googles, more Microsoft, more Facebooks of the world, more open eyes of the world even. It's a gross violation of everything California stands for, what's made California great as the hub of innovation and research. California's, California's claim to fame has been a state welcoming to frontier technology. And we've done a pretty good job of balancing research and innovation with managing the risks of these technologies. And we have a pretty good framework now at this point after having seen the development of semiconductor technology, of the internet, of smartphones, um, of cloud, that while there are certainly risks, what you want to do is provide sufficient safe harbor to the underlying technology developers. It will force most leading AI companies out of California, probably out of the United States actually, and it reverses any hope we have 
of bringing back a vital local economy to places like San Francisco that were crushed in the pandemic. That's being based in California, we wouldn't necessarily have access to if there's open source model that are you know, higher performance that may not be released in California because of this law. Or when we do down the line, in a few years, it's entirely likely that we will start to want to fine tune some things. And I, I could just, it, it would be, I think, potentially just a headache to have to think about, oh, what's the regulation here? That stuff obviously slows startups down. And I, the SB 1047 is probably only the beginning of regulation on AI, if that path is gone down. I hate to be in a situation where California is viewed to be the state which is curbing all the uh, innovations that's happening in AI, but you have to go across the border either to Nevada to actually utilize some of the innovations that's happening uh, uh, elsewhere. If you could rewrite the bill, what would you change about it? There's many different components. What would you fix or change? Uh, I would eliminate section one and two. I, I probably would just get rid of them. Maybe you could keep the creation of a AI, AI advisory board or AI safety board that essentially has some, it's sort of a, a responsibility to, to communicate to the legislature about the status of AI safety, right? I think funding, and, and the funding part is the big part, but getting, having a way for the state to have a compute cluster that the amazing Texas universities, University of Texas, sorry, Texas, they have amazing universities. California has amazing universities. The California system of education, higher education, is really top-notch. Stanford and Berkeley and the state school, the University of California schools. I just know people from and work with people at those schools for a long time. And there's really top-notch people. And so giving them kind of abilities to create rules, like how, how do you test for safety? How do you actually just explore the space? Give them the ability to explore the space with compute. But it's funding to do that. Like somebody's got to pay for that. The burden should not be just on the model developers, but also the users and 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 application or solutions that actually adapt these models and try to uh, develop full solutions we should try to provide the basic controls to protect privacy and make it safe and not make it a biased a biased approach as opposed to curbing that at the innovation level i would try to ensure that we're accelerating open source as we've discussed from a economic perspective from a competitiveness perspective, making sure that open source is the reason that startups are able to thrive today in the in a very capital intensive AI sector. So number one, regulate, I would focus on misuses, not models. Number two, I would accelerate open source for our competitiveness. And the third is I would actually focus on concrete AI security issues that we're actually facing. One core message should be like, let's figure out whose interest is it, who does this bill serve, right? Does it serve the public? Does it serve the interests of a few? Right. And behind that, the messages that are created around it, right? how much of that actually reflects a reality? And how much of that actually reflects some potential hypothetical future that may not even ever come true? right? And I think right now, when as a practitioner in AI, when I'm using the technology, I see the capabilities of it, but I also see a lot of aspects of it that is still so new and nascent. Just a case in point in here, a lot of the models recently, if you asked it, is 9.11, 9.11 greater than 9.9? .9? A lot of them say no. <laughs> like really basic math, right? And the way, the reason is that these models are calculators on words, right? And I think really thinking about them as that, as like, these are just calculators on words and not as a anthropomorphized being that chats with you and talks to you and has some, you know, consciousness behind that really sets it in perspective, right? We asked uh, Senator Wiener's office very early on to remove the, and that was a consensus view that we had with EFF, the Electronic Freedom Foundation. The FMD is, is a no-go. It's a political agency. It's, it replaces the supervision of tens of thousands of scientists with the supervision of five board directors and maybe 40 employees, roughly. And then you have some auditors in there, but the auditors aren't really making their own decisions. It's the employees that are determining what they're going to be auditing. From a political perspective, it, it's not right. And from a information theory perspective, it's really inefficient. And then from also from a kind of standpoint of competitiveness and regulatory capture, we have a one party state in California. I've seen this pattern play out in private industry, 
You also can see this in legacy tech companies, as kind of the founders who are really motivated and they want to build good products. They, they make their money and they leave. And then you get like this less motivated people who are jumping in and their goal is to maximize the size of their fiefdom within a specific structure rather than building and expanding the structure or expanding the pie overall. So our recommendations generally are around transparency and building a framework for common communication about the future and then maybe injecting a little bit of funding into specific areas that we think are underfunded. It's not the right technology to regulate. If I were to write a bill, I would do it about a type of orchestration system that can carry out actions. Okay, you can't enable malicious actions with, you can't create like a technological system that can carry out any type of crime. If it can be jailbroken, to carry a crime, it should not be allowed to be released. You've just heard from AI leaders about the dangers of Senate Bill 1047. This bill threatens to stifle innovation and harm startups by imposing heavy regulations and legal risks. If we want to keep our state at the forefront of technology, we need to act. Contact your local state assembly members and urge them to vote no on SB 1047. Let's protect California's role as a leader in AI innovation.